Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode one of Masters of the Multiverse. This is a uh, podcast about comic books and comic book movies and uh, sci-fi. Um, no shit. <laughs> I'm going to edit that out after. Okay. (laughs) This is a a podcast about uh, comic books, movies, TV shows uh, from the unique point of view of two regular Canadian guys. The only point of view that matters. (laughs) I am uh, host number one. My name is John. And with me as always is my co-host. Kyle. Number two. (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's, we have to make sure that that's <laughs> obvious. Okay, so um, in the first episode here, the uh, maiden voyage, if you will, might be like Titanic. Yeah. Might not be. We'll see. Um, first episode, we kind of just wanted to recap what uh, what it was in 2019, the year that was, and what we kind of thought of it. So, um, Kyle, what, what were your overall thoughts on 2019 as a year as far as uh, the movies and stuff that we uh, we like here? I literally could have not seen a movie all year and watched just Endgame and been satisfied. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, I think people are going to realize right away that you're generally the more negative one, and I'm usually trying to talk you into what? things. So it's a good way to, good way to start off. <laughs> yeah, I, I center <laughs> us though. You go off and <laughs> off on your own, and then I bring you back down to reality sometimes. So okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, so I mean, 2019 was kind of a, a groundbreaking year. I mean, we saw things like the culmination of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Avengers Endgame, and uh, then we pretty much saw the bottom of the barrel and the death of uh, the X Men franchise as a whole. So <laughs> what a year to be alive yeah yeah two of the well my favorite series is pretty much down and out and the one growing up that i didn't really care about is now my favorite one to watch so it is what it is strange how the world works (laughs) yeah (laughs) and these are the days of our lives can i say that is that going to get copywritten probably okay perfect we're off to a good start demonetization immediately (laughs) i think that's what they they call it right okay (laughs) We we had a brief conversation about not getting me tooed before the podcast, so it's pretty much impossible. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So kind of what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through a couple categories for things this year, and I have some ideas written down that we can kind of bounce off each other. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about, like kind of what 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 our biggest surprises of the year were. So either things that we didn't think would happen that did, or things that we thought were going to be awful that ended up being good, um, and uh, and just kind of what really really took us by surprise so um i've got a couple of things written down here um and uh there's kind of some honorable mentions and then some things that i are in the things that i think were were um kind of the winner of this category what you'd say but um number one i think was um you know that that star wars jedi fallen order game the fact that it was Mm. actually good (laughs) because <laughs> let's be honest ea's had a terrible track record of making star wars video games i well, mean the battlefront games were full of controversy and uh, everything after the first one i didn't even bother with the other ones yeah and i think that's a lot of people how they felt like they they hyped up this um first player story in the second one that apparently was like maybe four or five hours i think well the big i thought i always thought the big problem with those ones wasn't necessarily the game itself was just the like pay to win like you had to pay for loot crates and yeah this, mi- microtransactions last year was the year of reckoning when it came to loot boxes i think and i <laughs> yeah. think that that really pushed a lot of people over the edge but um so that was kind of my first thing did you have something that was surprising for you last year uh i didn't play a ton of video game video game wise i would i really enjoyed the fallen order um I still go always end up going back and playing Red Dead Redemption 2 all the time. It's well, we'll just, get there. We'll get yeah, there. Don't worry so about that. I don't even know what year that came out. I've been playing that for a while now. But That that was last year, Kyle. Was yeah, it last year? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, another one that I had, uh, the whole Joker phenomenon, basically. Mm. So this was a movie that... Um, I think it would be fair to say that Warner Brothers kind of set up to fail. I mean, they didn't really have much faith in this, I don't think. They gave it a pretty shoestring budget, and everybody was kind of wondering what Joaquin Phoenix was going to bring to the table, and and, and then it ended up making a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. Uh, the director, I don't know his name, but he seemed to be the only one. Todd Phillips. Todd, well, Todd Phillips. There it is. I guess I'll get better at learning this stuff, but as of right now, it <laughs> doesn't really matter. Anyways, he seemed like he was the only one who was like really behind what he was doing. Yeah. Um, and then of course Phoenix is pretty much epic in almost anything he does. I I, I can't tell if I love the guy or hate him. To <laughs> be honest with you, like I, I, it's just something about his face. I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I I haven't seen it. I don't see all of his movies, but like the the ones 
you know, like obviously Gladiator. He was awesome in that. I liked him in Signs. Um, and Joker was just. I mean, I don't know. The thing with Joker is you never know what you're going to get with who's acting. It's true. And I mean, there's so many different interpretations of the character. And I think that's kind of one of the best things about that character. But at the same time, like I, I acknowledge that that was a very well-made movie. It was an extremely well-acted movie. That was not a comic book movie. That was no. Joker in name only. No, I've, I've been hearing people talk about how it wasn't even meant to be a Joker. It was just, it was just a movie about mental illness that turned out like, Hey, let's throw the Joker. Let's well, and that put... seems like a perfect candidate for exactly that. It's like, Oh, you know, this, uh, this movie that we've made, could this be Joker? Yeah. Could this be? Yeah. No, I think. Yeah, let's do that. And just the storytelling of it was really like, you don't know what's true, really actually happening because it's yeah. being told through his point of view and he's clearly well mentally ill. Like as a story device, I kind of like that, like the unreliable narrator, mm -hmm. right? And so you, I mean, at the start of the movie, I guess, spoiler alert for Joker, if anybody hasn't seen it, it's been out for months. Come on, guys, get with it. <laughs> but um realistically i mean you start to trust all the things that you see from this guy and then at the end it gets flipped on the head what even actually happened yeah well i mean like i was immediately on to kind of what was going on when all of a sudden out of nowhere that girl was attracted to him yeah like just well, out of nowhere i was like fair. okay that's kind of weird i mean we both experience that in our lives oh yeah i get it's, it all the time it, it happens Kyle. yeah it's a just, thing just yeah random hot girls <laughs> wanting to make out with me for no reason uh, um yeah, but that, that's when I first, it's like, since I saw that, I was like, okay, well, this is obviously going to be a little distorted, but I didn't know to, how much detail it would be to sort of like all the clocks are at the same time. Yeah, I guess. And stuff like that. Like it's pretty, it was a really, it really caught me by surprise. I was a little, I guess that my version of uh, gory and violent <laughs> is different than most people. Fair enough. Yeah. I think like it was more of a character study than anything than that. Right. Like I mm. think it was more of a, a depiction of a man, like you said, descending further into mental illness and stuff like that. And, and uh, I mean, I, it's hard to mention the Joker without mentioning all the people that think this is going to incite violence or, <laughs> or that this is going to, um, you know, glamify mental illness. Does anybody think that that's actually true? Like uh, apparently, that's rough, man. That's that's hard. I mean, you got to well, take that's, it. That's what the that's what the movie was fighting against was all the people saying that everyone was going to become super violent against whoever. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Well, and I think so. Joker as a movie, as far as uh, as far as this podcast goes, is a perfect candidate for more of a deep dive later on and stuff like that because mm -hmm. we could probably talk about it for for the whole hour and and whatever else. But I think we we will keep show how on. I relate to it. <laughs> Oh man. Um, <laughs> any other big surprises of the year? My biggest surprise was because I've been so let down from star Wars ever since episode one. I haven't really enjoyed, I've watched them simply because they're star Wars. Of course. One through three, I was rather disappointed. Revenge of the Sith is my favorite one out of those three, which is an oddball. Um, and then rogue one, I really enjoyed. Um, it's cause everybody dies. So yeah. And then the last three, I went to them, We'll talk about them later because I don't have much to say about them. Um, but The Mandalorian was pretty damn epic. Uh, I thought it was one of the best shows I've seen. Um, the two most surprising things were both TV shows, The Mandalorian and The Boys. Yes. You know what? I actually completely forgot that the boys came out this year until you just said that yeah <laughs> so this is going to change a lot of things on my list <laughs> yeah but yeah absolutely that you know what um i i uh am probably one of the few people and you'll probably hear this from me a lot as we talk about things but i feel like i'm one of the few people that actually read that comic before it was even announced that it was going to be a tv show yeah i read it after watching the series because <laughs> the series was so damn cool i was like i gotta see what this is all about well and i think you'd agree with me that the comic's even more off the wall like it's oh, yeah. it's even yeah. it's it's even crazier but at the same time like they talk about things that might not necessarily work as far as being adapted to a tv show or movie and i did not think that was going to work and they did a really good job of that i am just super because I've been desperately wanting an Injustice movie. Uh, I knew so, that was going to come up at some point. Um, I thought that scene in Justice League when Superman was not evil, but just beating up the rest of the Justice League. I thought that was the best part of almost any superhero movie I've seen in a while. And then seeing what Superman would be like if he was just 
unhinged, kind of off the wall, didn't care about people. Um, a lot of people were referring to Brightburn as that kind of aspect of it. I think this is a way better depiction of what it would be have like. Have you seen Brightburn? Yeah. Yeah, I have not watched that one, and that's something I really want to get into. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's good. I'm continually adding things to my list as we go on for different categories. But, <laughs> yeah, well. But yeah, so so you're going with Mandalorian as surprise of the year. Yeah, I mean, the it wasn't... It had its kind of this filler episodes, like the first two episodes were the main arc and the last two were the finishing up of that arc more or less and then kind of meet the odd people in between which will obviously carry over the next season yeah the introduction of the have you seen it well so we'll get into this in one of our other categories that i have but no i have not okay but i mean obviously being the kind of guy i am i've read every (laughs) single article and everything that's ever been on it but so so my question i guess for you is as we're talking about it and we'll get into it more later probably, but like, do you get that like Western feel 100%. for it? Yeah. Especially in episode two, more than anything, where yeah. he was literally, there's, well, first two episodes, there's almost no dialogue from the, the Mandalorian. Right? Yeah. Cause he's just, and of course the second one, he's literally walking through the desert. Got no one to talk to. He's carrying a baby Yoda, which is probably the coolest thing I've seen. Yeah, I mean, baby Yoda, everybody, everybody lost their goddamn minds over this baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I can't, every time I turn on my phone, there's Yoda memes everywhere, baby Yoda memes everywhere. Um, but yeah, it was just, and just this long walk fight protecting. And then of course he goes after the Jawas and it was just, it's, that was one of my favorite episodes. Like the two, the major arcs were done incredibly well. It, the stories in between were good. They weren't like, oh my god! They weren't nearly as good as the yeah. Shock it was it was enough to to hold your attention, but not keep, enough to keep you yeah. wanting to see the next one. And so one of the things that I kind of um, heard about that that I, I wouldn't mind hearing your comment on is basically how they got a bunch of these like famous actors and and famous people. Um, like you know you hear before the series is starting that uh, you know Bill Burr is going to be in this and that Taika Waititi is going to voice a droid in this and and uh, and who else G- Gina Carano is going to be in this. And and then they're there and gone so quickly. I mean, did that not seem like a little bit of a disappointment to you as far? Like, I know everybody kind of circles back at the end. Spoiler yeah. warning, I guess, for Mandalorian, <laughs> so. but we've already been talking about it. So, you know what? Blanket spoiler warning for everything. If you guys haven't seen anything from this year, go listen to a different podcast. And you can rely on John for that because I usually don't care. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so about the people that that were kind of touted as and, and advertised as being big parts of this show kind of weren't. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, Gina Carano was a big part of the show. She actually had a great role. I uh she's from she ends up she's from Alderaan. Interesting. Yeah, like it's so she's uh and she's believable in what she does. Like she's well, she's bad. She's not a tiny girl. No, she's she's built. She's strong, and she's from the MMA. Yeah. So she could probably beat the wheels off ninety percent of the people. That she's is. someone that would survive out in the world of Star Wars. Yeah, and she definitely suits the role. I mean, there's a couple couple things that happen. You know, like punching Beskar armor with a bare fist probably going to hurt a little. Apparently not. But I mean, people like us know what Beskar is, and most people don't. So I mean, realistically, well, punching metal. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, okay. Never mind. <laughs> With a bare fist, it's probably going to hurt, but it doesn't. But I mean, those are just like little hiccups at whatever. Yeah. That's what it was. But okay. she was great. Uh, Carl Weathers had his moments. Like he wasn't like, he wasn't like, oh my God, give him a. a you mean award. Chubbs from, from Happy yeah. Gilmore? Yeah. That's who you're talking about? That's, if anybody doesn't realize who Carl Weathers it's is. It's funny. Everyone has seen talk about it. Like, I think his name was Grief Karga. Nobody remembers it. They just call him. Apollo. Or yeah. Car- yeah. Car- right. Car- Apollo <laughs> Creed. Right. Yeah. So um, I guess he would have been a real badass until Drago showed up yeah, and killed him in the ring. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, it was great. Like they, they had their parts to play. Like, I mean, it was about the Mandalorian. It yeah. wasn't about these. It was about who he was meeting on the way. Uh, I think Gina Cron ended up being in three episodes. Um, she was in like a seven samurai episode where they right. thought a village had to, which was directed by, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Right. And there was a lot of Jurassic Park vibes in that one. A lot of interesting directing in this too. And and directors involved in other ways. Like obviously John Favreau, the showrunner and everything. Um, big influence on the Marvel universe and now now big into the Star Wars universe too. But um, 
you know, Taika Waititi, the, is, uh, if anybody doesn't know who he is, he's um, Korg in Thor Ragnarok, also directed that movie. Yeah. Comedic genius. If you don't know who he is, you'll only have to watch one of his things and you'll immediately know you're watching Taika Waititi stuff. 100%. Very distinct, you but, know, and and obviously, spoiler alert, a little bit of foreshadowing for next episode, but Thor Love and Thunder, something I'm really <laughs> looking forward to. 100%. Um, so anyway, I mean, I think, uh, once again, The Mandalorian is probably a good topic for a separate episode of this show where we can get into it a little bit more. Yeah, but sure. So that's your surprise of the year. That's my biggest surprise. And then, of course, The Boys, which we discussed already. Yeah. and um, Not in detail, but that's another thing we can go over. Well, yeah, I'll get this... into that. I'll get into that a little bit more when it comes to the like favorite TV show category well, that I have that here, also, too. Also, season, think... season two is coming out real soon. Right, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll do a bit of a recap before season two, I would think. Yeah. Um, same with The Mandalorian would probably be a good time to do that. But my, my biggest surprise of the year, and this is kind of something that is, um, you know, maybe a little bit adjacent to some people, but the announcement that they were ending Arrow. So well, Arrow, like, yeah. yeah. So for Arrow, I mean, obviously for the people that doesn't that aren't super familiar, is is kind of the flagship show of the the CW's DC universe. Kind of really um, ushered in a whole new age for for superhero TV shows. It's the only reason superhero TV shows are really around. Right it's now. yeah, and I mean, it's in any good capacity. Yeah, like they had they had like Generation X and all that stuff like years ago, but not quite the same, right? But mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of picked up where Smallville left off and kind of filled that hole, but then also sort of branched out and took took what was cool about the marvel movies as far as established characters and then bleeding into other things and kind of made that for tv and now there's a, a tv universe with crossovers and obviously crisis on infinite earth started this year and it, or ended this year started last year mm-hmm. and uh and the trailblazer of all that's kind of arrow right so mm-hmm. to hear that that was coming to an end was kind of a bit of a um well i guess uh my biggest surprise of the year yeah um i mean that's what six seasons in i mean i don't really know how much more eight is it eight this was the eighth season yes yeah i don't know how much more you can really get out of green arrow no and I, <laughs> it, so the only reason they got as much legs out of it as they did i think is is it it was batman they yeah. made it batman right and I, I still there was an episode last year i think it was the last crossover where they were talking about batman yeah and he was sitting there saying i'm the first vigilant oh my god <laughs> So good. <laughs> did you now, did on a side note? Did you watch the Crisis on Infinite yeah, Earths? Yeah, I did. So I've watched the first half of it and not the second half. Okay. So not the last two episodes, so, I believe. Obviously, I, again, I'm up to date with what happened and everything, yeah. but haven't actually. Spoiler seen it. warning yeah. for Crisis, I guess. I mean, that's my job, but that's sure. Fine. I don't I'm even just, actually want to talk about it, up. so you don't need to. Okay, to spoiler good. warning, but good. um, so yeah, my biggest surprise of the year was kind of kind of that. So, um. Yeah. Moving on, anything else to say about that? I just, I mean, he's going to be around still. He's Spectre now, so. Yeah, true. And I think that was kind of cool. Yeah. Like, I think that um, that's a, a kind of of a good way to tie off everything. Did you see the finale of Arrow that was on last week? I hear it was pretty good. Uh, do you want to know what happened? Of course, I already know okay. what happened. Kyle. Well, I think. I, Spoiler warning for Arrow. Obviously. <laughs> well, he is John Stewart, right? Like, his, yeah. the, the guy, the yeah. dad that raised him, his last name was Stewart. So it was his biological name is Diggle. you're talking about john diggle yeah. yeah yeah but he's actually john like john stewart so that's how they tied that in he got the got, well what we can assume is the ring yeah i thought at one point we would find out that his middle name had been stewart all along yeah <laughs> i like how they did it though like still because that wasn't at all the plan no that was, that was that's fan service 100 like, percent. but people, would he wow. not be a great john oh, stewart green amazing Landing. john stewart and he's said in the last episode he's going to metropolis and they're doing now that they're all on earth prime uh, yeah, they're doing a Superman Clark and Lois show. Yeah, which I think is going to be great. That um, Tyler Hawk Hawk Yeah, the guy who plays Superman. <laughs> I think he does a really good job. He does a really good job, but as much flack as Brandon Ruth gets, oh man, <laughs> when he was standing beside him, I was like, dude, they it, messed up on Superman. It was Superman and here. Superboy at yeah. that point. But how cool was it to see? Brandon Routh as as Kingdom Come Superman. It was pretty cool. I mean, they didn't do enough with him, but like was... underutilized for sure. But at the same time, to to get to see that and and kind of get a little bit of closure for him as Superman and stuff like that, because as as much as people talk about um, Superman Returns as a movie, I get that it isn't great, and I'm the biggest <laughs> Superman apologist there ever is, and you know that. Yeah, but. 
as as much as um, as flack as that movie gets, he is good in that movie. He looks perfect. And he is role. a very good pickup from Christopher Reeve Superman, yeah. which is basically the, the the trajectory that that movie took. It was it was basically a continuation of that story. Yeah. And and as that, I think he's really good. So. Yeah, I don't know. I've always kind of been pulling for the guy. I find I, I like his sense of humor and stuff. I think too. he's underrated now. I think I think like I really enjoy him, and when I see him on screen, um, I once again at the end of the show when he got updated by Martian Manhunter, he's like, "I was a Superman." It's just like <laughs> it's just fantastic stuff for, and like you said, closure for him. Like he's just yeah. like. And I'm glad to see that he he wasn't deterred from getting involved in this stuff. Still. No, he seems to be like a good sport mm. with that kind of thing, right? Yeah, and I like that idea, but. Okay, so moving on um, through the the disappointments, uh, or sorry, through to biggest disappointment of the year. So this year had some incredible highs, but man, it had some serious lows too. Um, So I'm going to kind of start off with a softball one that maybe I don't think you would have on your list. Um, Glass. The much anticipated third movie in M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable Universe and man did that wrap up as just a wet turd. (laughs) Yeah, I mean it uh, I found I knew what it was because I'm old enough to know what Unbreakable was and I was old enough to know (laughs) what was going on at the end of Oh, so split. One, split. Yeah. When they when it showed them, like I knew what was going on. I think there's a lot of people that are watched Split that had no idea. No, I don't think so too. I mean, was. that's the risk and reward of pulling in a secret sequel from a movie 15 years before, yeah. or however long it was. I don't remember what exactly the timeline was between Split and Unbreakable. But um, the frustrating thing for me is. You know, they have this great premise where they, they make Unbreakable, right? right? And everybody, you know, I think widely reviewed is a pretty pretty great movie. And then they somehow managed to sneak this split movie out as a secret sequel to it without anybody finding out. Yeah. Which is fantastic, mm-hmm. right? And how M. Night Shyamalan is that, right? Like, that's just how it goes. Um, but then to take these things and put it together and have a chance to have a really meaningful wrap-up and just to just to... Just fuck the landing. I can't. I can barely remember it. I have to like one bad oh, movie. I'll, I'll tell you everything that you need to know. Doesn't he get drowned in a puddle? The guy from Unbreakable drowns in a puddle. Yeah, yeah. Everybody ends up dead. People watch everybody die, and the world goes on. And isn't there a bunch of superheroes though? Well, well yeah, but as far as they the building on the potential of that and doing absolutely nothing with it, then yeah, that's exactly. And weren't they like an Irish version of like Hydra? Well, the doctors or whatever. Much, yeah. Hydro. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I, I remember I was super excited to see. I, well, uh, James McAvoy, I think, is another one of the best actors. He's a fantastic actor, right? Um, and and again, a little forward sizzle. Great actor in another terrible movie. This yeah, time. yeah. Um, but I was super looking forward to seeing the clash between him and uh, Bruce Willis's character, David Dunn. Um, what do they call him? The guardian or the yeah no, something, something like terrible that. um and it was super i mean it was super disappointing like <laughs> i don't know yeah, I just there was nothing I that's think, why it's in the disappointments of the i year. think i think oh. the only thing done, yeah i think the only <laughs> thing the dun guy did was manage to get him into it like lock him in something yeah and that was just whatever and then he got drowned in a pool like i said yeah, uh I wet fart i agree you're up with one of yours uh hands down game of thrones season eight Ah, see, I figured this would come up at some point in this podcast. I famously have not seen a single episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so this is going to be something that you're mostly going to take the lead on. Um, like I said, I'm one of those nerds who, if I don't watch something, I still know what happened. Yeah. So I've, I've heard much of the criticism of this. And, and so with some time away from it and some time to unpack, has your thoughts on it changed at all? Not really. Um, I kind of went back, well... It just was so rushed. It like dragon so, melting a chair, right? Yeah. Come like, on. I mean, it knows politics and geopolitics, <laughs> so it obviously knows the chair is what's causing all the problems here. Perfect. Um, I don't know. It just was really rushed. It the the character turn. I mean, it makes sense that she was going to go mad, but just it happened so quick, and it went from her being this kind of caring, loving, doesn't want slavery, wants everyone to be free person to 
I'm going to murder every single person in this city because. Because why not? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, so the, that twist aside and everything, obviously that's kind of the big yeah, exception everybody seems to take with it. But the actual ending, like how they left things, what, what did you think of that? Uh, well, I mean, they spent, what was it, eight seasons building up what everyone wanted to see was Jon Snow fighting the Night King. And dude can't even get past the guard dog. <laughs> well, I mean, so um, one thing I think people are going to learn about Kyle real quick. Anything involving a woman, probably not his favorite. That is so not true. So, I mean, the fact that Jon <laughs> Snow doesn't get to fight the Night King and he does get killed by a um, female... No, that's not no it has that. nothing to do with it, Kyle. No, not <laughs> okay, at all. Okay. No, it has. Sorry, it's, I just, it's just the fact that she just came out of nowhere, and it was. I mean, what did they call it? Subverting expectations. That's what the whole season was about. Like every every single fan wanted to see Jon Snow fight this guy. I think it was uh, Benioff and Weiss subverting the amount of time they wanted to spend. Yeah, because <laughs> they then, they could not get out of there fast enough. And then they have Arya, who granted was a badass. Um. Two minutes before this happened, couldn't sneak out of a room with four of the random dead dudes without getting attacked. But managed, you can kill the leader of the Managed them to easily. sneak past all four generals and surprise the Night King. Okay. I don't know. And just like, and she was super badass and then uh, got hit in the head and was not anymore. Um, it, it wasn't that it was her. Like, I mean, if it, if it was, they kind of geared it towards that a little bit more. Like, you like, if they keep, had led into it a little bit, it, it probably would have been to, a little better. They tried better. to play catch up and being like, well, we foreshadowed this in season whatever when yeah. Melisandre said you're going to kill people with blue eyes and stuff. Well, and it's funny. I think so. Judging by talking to people that are big fans of the show, it seems like almost every issue with it could have been solved with a little bit more time. Yeah. If it wasn't, if they weren't so eager to get into the Disney. Star Wars. Yeah. But. Well, it's still Disney. Spoiler alert, they're not doing that anymore. Yeah, I so know. um didn't I think a bunch of Disney stuff like didn't Obi-Wan just get delayed? We'll get to that. Um yeah, I don't know, it was super disappointing. And then in regards to movies cuz this is going to play right into what you said to me before, Captain Marvel was an absolute dumpster fire. See, I you know what? I know that you say that, but I was there with you and you did not hate that movie near as much as you act like you do now. It was a dumpster. It was a horrible movie. Okay. Because just just by how she was in Endgame, I liked her in Endgame. Because she had shorter hair, looked more like a dude? Yeah, that's Okay, what that, that was must all be about. it. Yeah. <laughs> No, because I she, really hope people pick up on my sarcasm in some <laughs> of these parts of the podcast. Yeah, no, because she had some, for, she had more of an arc in that three minutes of Endgame than she had in her entire movie. Well, I think, um, and I mean, you're probably going to disagree with this, but I think this movie was a good movie that suffered from origin movie fatigue. Like we've Maybe. seen this same story, um, whether it had been Iron Man first, Captain America, um, Thor, and then all of a sudden we started seeing it with Ant Man and Doctor Strange, and and all of those are are good movies. But uh, you know, like I every day I wake up, I thank the Lord that we didn't have to see Uncle Ben die again. We, yeah, right. Like yeah. the way they jumped into Spider Man story instead of giving us that origin. It showed us that the 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 public now can can take not having an origin for everyone. Fair enough, but uh, but I mean, then again, you've got you got the other two origin stories that came out last year in Venom and Joker, and they were both awesome. Well, debatable, but okay. Um, no, so, Venom was good. Okay, Venom was good. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I I enjoyed Venom too, but um, so I guess what I mean by that would be more. What am I trying? I to think say it was. Here? I think it was plagued by publicity. I think is what ruined it for a lot of people. Yeah, I guess. Um, well, just, you say ruined it for a lot of people. It made a billion dollars, Kyle. It's not ruined for a lot of people. A lot yeah, of people so, like this. So movie. did Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi. Like they're both not great movies. All right. <laughs> um, um, no, like it just it was plagued by what was said beforehand and what was said after, and the advertisement, and then. I mean, I think there's she she verbally went after 
not like in a mean way. She just said something that was taken out of, maybe out of context and it offended a bunch of people. And then that blew up to, to all kinds of stuff. And what I'm thinking, so, um, and call me crazy here, but, um, you just seem very like anti any political things bleeding into movies. Uh, yeah. Right. And I, I think maybe that did a little bit of it. You got to admit though, there was, there was a couple of really cool things about this movie. And I think one is something that I would love to see more. And that is an early nineties setting. Like, yeah, you know, come on. The, like everybody, we see things in the eighties. We th- see things in the seventies. We see things during the world wars. How cool was it to see something from our childhood? I mean, obviously being the age we are, she fell into a blockbuster video <laughs> yeah. store yeah. and you know, there's no doubt playing in the background of stuff and like, like things like that. She was wearing a nine inch nails t-shirt for God's sakes. Yeah. Like little stuff like that, I think was really cool. Um, I think we can both acknowledge that the de-aging in this movie was very good. Yep. Um, there was no, you know, Grand Moff Tarkin from Rogue One in this. Yeah. But, uh, um, really, really good. And, you know, I, I think overall the performances were good. I think Jude Law was good and wasn't really given as much to do as I would have hoped. The yeah. rest of Star Force was non-existent in that I movie. Just, I, there's just stuff that, like, the characters that they brought back that people knew of, there was no kind of explanation on how they got from here to where they ended up. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more of that. You mean like Coulson and... No, and, like Korath and... Yeah. And, See, that's what I mean. The rest of the... And Ronan. Like, yeah. Because I was hoping that maybe there'd be like, why did Korath all of a sudden just be like, hey, there was a little hint of it when like he yeah. popped up on a, to the hologram or whatever, but... For sure. I was kind of like, that's what that was the drag. That was like, kind of pulled me into seeing this well, movie. And, and why bring those guys back from Guardians of the Galaxy if not to use them for something yeah to to, you know what i mean and i think they i think they it worked because it caught my attention right because i personally don't like the captain marvel comics fair enough um the kelly sudonic run that's been been going on or that kind of went on in the recent past that a lot of this was based on is is pretty good um i can't ever see you buying and reading one yeah (laughs) i just i I can't (laughs) i just not i just don't like them i never have um I th- I feel like I mean it's Disney's, but I mean I feel like if they went through what Carol Danvers actually kind of what what she went through in the comics, in the earlier better, ones, you know, but that's but, it's problematic. Yeah, like you know issues of mental illness and, and alcoholism, schizophrenia and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I kind of understand why they avoided that. So, um, I, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree yeah. for no. the first of many times <laughs> oh, yeah. in this podcast. Yeah. Like uh, I think, and yeah, like and it's just it's it's just it was spoon feeding things. Like, but one thing, Kyle, one thing. Mm. Goose. The flurkin was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the, oh, oh, don't, yeah, the Nick, no. the Nick Fury losing an eye? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I will give you that one. That's stupid. <laughs> but the that cat was pretty great. Yeah. No, the cat was good. Like, I will literally. CGI I will, was questionable sometimes, but. <laughs> do you mean when it threw up the Tesseract on no, his desk? No, I mean when it was doing the zero gravity. Oh, up yeah. Okay. The, Thing, but... You know what's crazy though? The zero gravity cat looked less real than the tentacles flying out of its mouth and destroying people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can we acknowledge yeah. that? Yeah, no, it was great. So I'll get, so I'll give Captain Marvel to do like it was an okay movie, but I just in regards to being what I wanted to be really good and being super disappointed by. Yeah, that, that was it. well, and, and a long overdue introduction for a character that needed to be in this universe sooner than this. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. It was like, overdue. Like, she, this could have been, like, there was original plans for, for her introduction to happen in Age of Ultron. And mm-hmm. I think that that's probably, that probably would have been better. And work her into this, like, how powerful, like, I, I can accept her being powerful. I just don't accept, I just have a hard time just being like, click, okay, I'm now this most powerful being, except for Thanos, obviously. But Yeah, so for those of you who didn't see, because this is a, a, an audio medium, not a video medium, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he snapped the thing off his neck like when she destroys the inhibitor chip or whatever the hell it is. But um, we're going to have to move on from that yeah. because you're, you're going to keep going. I could go so, on all day on that. Um, I've, one, one of the things that I was disappointed by and uh, um, the new Hellboy movie was just an absolute oh, yeah. flop. Yeah. Like, you know, I... To the point where I I didn't even watch it. 
Oh, really? You didn't no, watch it at like, all? I mean, there, and I, maybe I'm, I'm a perfect example of being swayed by um, immediate reaction to it, but th- there was no reason for me to go watch someone other than Ron Perlman be Hellboy when I <laughs> heard with the reaction to this. Uh, David Harbour has got me. I'll pretty much watch anything he's in. Now. That's fair. After a lot str- of people like Stranger him. Things, yeah. and so, which is another thing we can go on the, one of the best things this year. But uh, I think I just gave it a chance. Yeah. To see him. And I like the look of the new Hellboy. Yeah. I, I know the old Hellboy looked a lot more like the comic book. But this one, I just liked the, the look of it. I just, yeah. He looked a little bit more. Well, tell me, you, you've seen it. Worth checking out? <sighs> on a Saturday night movie on yeah. TV, maybe. I wouldn't. If it hits Netflix. Yeah. yeah. It's, okay. it's nothing. I like a lot of horrible movies. And I watch <laughs> a lot of horrible movies just for the sake of watching movies. So, I mean, I've seen it two or three times. But. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, wouldn't. It's not something I'd recommend to people. Yeah. And so, uh, do you have any more disappointments of the year before I get to my crowning achievement? Disappointments? No, not really. No, I was pretty satisfied with everything. My my biggest disappointment of the year, and maybe it shouldn't necessarily be in this category because I didn't really expect it to be good, but the dumpster fire that is Dark Phoenix. And oh, I'm gonna. I, I don't want to talk about it just yet because. Um, Again, a little f- a little forward sizzle for the podcast. I do have a worst movie so of the year I. category. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll leave leave the Dark Phoenix talk for now. But uh, yeah, so maybe I'll just leave it there. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, um, a category now, things from this year that we didn't get to that we wish we had had time for. Wasn't really any movies because movies are generally if I want to watch it I'll go and see it. Yeah, I can I can find time for a movie. Yeah, if I haven't, uh, video games are kind of something that uh, Death Stranding I've heard nothing but good things about and I haven't gotten around to playing that. The great man Hideo Kojima. Yeah, Yeah. but I don't know if I have the time to play that either. I don't know if I have the patience. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, and Resident Evil Two got Game of the Year this year. So right. That Resident Evil 2 remake, that was something. So, I mean, one thing that separates us pretty seriously in this podcast, especially on the video game side of things, I have a Switch. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. any AAA games and stuff that are coming out, I'm not the person to talk to right now. Um, but we do have some video game categories coming up, so I'll leave it for that. Um, tell you, most of mine are um, kid games centered around on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I think... I. Kind of, I was horrible at Resident Evil when I was younger. I never really got anywhere in it. Um, I'm a little bit wiser, so I can figure out simple game puzzles now that I couldn't Fair figure enough. out when I Fair was enough. younger. Um, it just wasn't so, one of those series that ever really drew me in. Like I, um, I played Resident Evil one i think it was it was one of the first like remastered games and it came out on the gamecube and i was probably the only person in the world that bought a gamecube on the first day (laughs) and needed to have stuff but um you know playing that i played through that uh, as a whole and uh um i really enjoyed it but resident evil just not a ton of ton of things for me it's not something there was one i can't even remember which one it was there was one that i got to play where it was chris was the main character and the other girl chris redfield shiva I think her name was Shiva. Shiva? That doesn't sound right. I'm going to tell you that right now. I think, I don't know. She was, I don't know. I thought, I think that's what her name was. Anyways, they were in Africa fighting this stuff and I played that entire game. Yeah. And obviously it's very memorable to you. This was like (laughs) a long time ago. (laughs) Okay. Um, But that's the only one, but uh, like to just kind of touch on you, like, like people, the, one of the most popular game franchises of all time is Final Fantasy and I haven't even looked at one of those before. no me neither i i um crush final fantasy 10 is one of my favorites but since then haven't been into it haven't even really wanted to and uh we'll talk about it in the um in next episode preview for next year but um everybody's going crazy over this final fantasy 7 remake that's yeah sure and yes and i don't know what it's about there so. are a good amount of people who that is their favorite game of all time okay crazy i might have to play it just so i kind of know what's going on well you might have to play it because i can't yeah fair <laughs> okay. enough so um a couple of mine i'll uh, i'll just do a couple of mine and you can do a couple of years after um titan season two. Oh, i yeah i, I want to like, get to that yeah, haven't seen it the should. first season i thought had its ups and downs um but you know uh, I'll I'll watch anything with Deathstroke in it, and Deathstroke's in the second season. It's a good Deathstroke. Yeah, and that's what I hear. And um, one of my all time favorite uh, comic book characters is and always has been Nightwing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hear I get a 
maybe 30 seconds of Nightwing in this season. You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> but you get to see him become Nightwing. Yeah. and But so. I mean, I thought that's what the first season was. Yeah. So this is a really drawn out process. Well, the first season was, I think, kind of a clear, like the, they didn't even have a season finale in the first season. Well, no, I mean, they, yeah, we can get into that later. Once so, when season two, or I guess once I recap season two, we can go over season one and season two, maybe in an episode Netflix or something now. like that. Yeah, yeah. so um, definitely something I'd like. But um, for people that don't know what Titans is, it's kind of like a gritty reimagining of the old Teen Titans series that shows basically all the superhero sidekicks, uh, Nightwing, Robin, um, Wonder Girl, um, Starfire, yeah. uh, all of those guys forming their own team a la the Justice League. It was one of those shows that got a lot of grief for how the characters looked before it aired. Yeah. And it works. It does. It the, really does. Disappointing Beast Boy, only ever a tiger. He's been a... No, okay, if you haven't seen the second season, he does, he does <laughs> venture in um, another direction. Okay, one more from me, uh, something that I haven't got to that I wish I would have this year. Um, and then I'll have a couple more after you do a couple more. But uh, Watchmen. I haven't seen it. Yeah, me neither. But all, by all accounts, really, really good. That's what I hear. i just not into it. You're not much Even the movie, the movie that came out, I wasn't... It, but have you read the graphic novel? No. no. See, that's the thing. So, um, a really phenomenal graphic novel for sure. Um, I think the movie "Say What You Want About Zack Snyder" it did his best. It it extremely hard thing to make. It like it was like I thought the fight scenes were great. Yeah. Like I thought there was great things about the movie. It's just you like the giant blue penis on Doctor Manhattan. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's that's what I thought, <laughs> that's yeah. what drew me in. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but by all accounts, this Watchmen TV show, I mean, great cast, you know, um, got Black Manta in it, that guy, whatever his name is, oh, uh, yeah. Regina King is in it. Um, like they, I hear there, you know, I hear nothing but good things about it, but I just haven't had a chance to get around to it yet. Yeah. No, it's, it's not something that's been on my to-do list either. Right. So, Fair enough. Um, do you have a couple and, and something that I've missed that I'd like to see? Yes. Uh, not really. I mean, I'm kind of, like I said, when it comes to TV shows and stuff, I'm pretty on my game. Like sometimes people mention something, maybe watch, maybe I will give Watchmen a chance and watch it. But like I said, if I haven't watched it, yeah, it's because I don't want to see it. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're not into it by now, chances yeah. are. Um, <laughs> Although that's starting to change now because Netflix, there's no real advertisement for Netflix. So yep. I never really know what's good on Netflix until someone says it's good. And then it's like, okay, well maybe I'll give it a chance. Um, like there's a couple shows I can't remember off the top of my head, but I mean, it's starting to happen more now where I actually don't know what people are talking about. Fair enough. Because before you'd see commercials for it or advertisements for it. Now it's just <laughs> Nobody like actually watches TV on now. February 3rd, there's three new shows that yeah. you had no idea were coming. So, um, so for me, I guess, um, Jedi Fallen Order was a big one that I didn't get to. Um, obviously I don't, I don't have anything to play it on, but I, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Kind of. Um, Uncharted meets Star Wars type thing is kind of what I've heard. Yeah. And I think that's probably a fair assessment or at least close. Yeah. The only downside I saw to it was it's, it's, it, there's not a ton of replay value to it for me. You play through the story once and that's about it. And you have to play and you have to go back and forth because it, yeah, learn new abilities and whatever. Of course. Um, but there's no, you can't, there's no, you can't really do a new game plus because that'll break the game mechanics because from the very start you'll be able to access all areas on each planet instead True. of going back and forth right so it kind of defeats the exploration aspect of it yeah so like once i finished it like even though i still had like you know five or six crates to find for the the suits and stuff and the i just was like i don't need to, i don't need to go through this again fair enough but um, initial play through one of the better games i played though awesome yeah um one of the big ones for me um it, probably my biggest thing I didn't get to this year that I want to is just The Mandalorian. Yeah, you got to watch that. Yeah, I, yes. again, I hear nothing but good things. I love the idea of Disney producing premium streaming TV. Like, whether it be the Marvel stuff that's coming, I think it's fantastic. Whether it's The Mandalorian, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Like, I the, these characters that they've crafted both in Star Wars and in the Marvel Cinematic Universe... Um, especially some of the lesser used ones are ones that I want to spend more time with. I mean, I'm super excited to see a Falcon and Winter Soldier show because, you know, like the Winter Soldier, one of my favorite characters. 
we barely get to see him. Mm-hmm. We see him in in forty minutes of a movie every three years, and now we're gonna get <laughs> you know six hours focused on these characters. and And I think we saw in Captain America: Civil War how cool the interaction between him and the Falcon can be. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see where they go with that story. Like, because uh, uh, Feige just came out and said that every TV series directly relates to the movie to the movie coming yeah. after it. So, well, did you see that picture of U.S. Agent they put out? No. Oh God. No. So they put a uh there was a, a leaked picture of, of Wyatt Russell playing US agent and he had Captain America's shield and the, the internet went nuts. Oh really? Yeah, not my Captain America. Is it a legit thing? Like, oh yeah, no, it's from the show for sure. Like it's been known for a while that he was cast as that and and uh for those who don't know, um US Agent from the comics was basically um the government's attempt at replicating Captain America after he passed away in the comics. So basically uh, a super soldier under the control of the American government and and doing their bidding for them. So it'd be interesting to see the power struggle between um the appointed Captain America's Anthony Mackie's Falcon and uh, from, you know, him being appointed from Captain America and, and then obviously the U S government wanting someone else who's going to have to go through a bit of a character arc because he's not very like, he has his moments where he's like, like when he's going back and forth with war machine, yep. but he's not very confrontational in my opinion. Fair enough. So for him to be Captain America, then have someone like us agent who, because I'm assuming Falcon's not going to have any superpowers other than just that he can fly. No, but that's not his. That's not his character. No, I right? know, but like to actually have the confrontation, like what kind of confrontation are you going to have with a? Well, and I think it'll be soldier? interesting because having Bucky in there, who's obviously got all of this baggage from being the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. and when you think back to uh, um, the Falcon's introduction into all this, he was a veteran counselor. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot so about an that. interesting angle on that, I think. Right. Yeah. No. It's, we, We'll see. What's the next movie after it? The Black Widow? No, Black Widow's before. So Black Widow comes out um, early next year, I think May. And then so it's but Multiverse I think, of Madness that comes after. You know what? I'm going to have to relook at the timeline. I think that's what's next. I don't. The know whole Phase that. Four timeline has has really jumbled me. So. I don't think anyone can do any predictions with this until they see what happens in the Multiverse of Madness because. I feel like that's, that's going to be the game changer. Change everything around. Yeah. So. That's going to be the, the Captain America winter soldier of, of the new phase. But there's lots of stuff happening with the TV. Like apparently they're not doing a secret wars movie. They're doing, going to do a secret Wars show. It's speculation says, so right. So, so. I think a lot of this is going to be dependent on reaction to a lot of these things. Right. Because I think plans could change pretty quickly. Like they had the, the inhumans built up as a TV show and we all saw what reaction to that did. Yeah, but that was also kind of characters that not a lot of people are aware of. What? People don't know Lockjaw <laughs> yeah. and Black Bolt? Um, and that was just the MCU's version of the X-Men they were trying to bring into it. So there was no real... Nobody knew who they were. Well, now they don't have to. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert, they have the X-Men. <laughs> nobody knew who they were. And it was a bunch of no-name actors. Well, not no-name actors, but like no. not from the universe. Like For sure. New yeah. actors. Um. And it just didn't work. It just, they took all their powers away in the first episode. Yeah. So, okay. It's not good TV. Um, yeah. But uh, the only thing, the only hiccup, the only real hiccup I think that Disney Plus in general is going to have is that they have way too long of a gap between The Mandalorian and the next, any type of episodic show that's coming out. Well, and I think that that, it's the kind of thing that takes time because once you have established things, then you're going to have new things coming in while you have following on seasons of other things Mm -hmm. so um but i mean i guess it just remains to be seen we're kind of stepping on the toes of episode two though yeah whatever so (laughs) um are we ready for our next category then sure okay so next category for me was uh best video game of the year and so um for me um obviously i like i said i i have a switch that's kind of my my big thing and yeah. for me i think the best game of the year was did did you ever play untitled goose game oh no but i heard about it it was fantastic yeah. it was absolutely fantastic i mean just to be this mischievous goose and just fuck shit up yeah that was that was uh that was it it, it brought me joy <laughs> on a deep down level makes sense yeah absolutely I was just going back and just kind of looking kind of quickly at what games I played because, yeah, yeah, Red Dead didn't come out. This came out the year before. Um, MK11 I played a lot of. Really? Yeah. Um, See, to me, I can't... I I understand the appeal of the Mortal Kombat games and stuff, but they're not Injustice, so I can't get into them. 
The Injustice games are are some of my favorite and most endearing fighting games I've ever played. See, I'm the on the opposite because I started with MK. Oh, okay. I like Injustice games, yeah. but I still like the MK games more. Mortal Kombat is what he's talking about. Um, just so you guys know. I'm pretty sure most people know. I'd hope. <laughs> hey, man, we um, don't know who's going to listen to this podcast. The only, the only downside to MK11 is, or Mortal Kombat games, is that unless you're really into the online stuff, there's not a ton of replay value to yeah. them. Well, I mean, I like, so NetherRealm is, is the one that's made these ones, and they are also the same people that made the Injustice games. Yeah. And I like the way they've kind of revitalized what a fighting game is and, and revised it into um, how they've put these story modes into these games. Yeah. Like the Injustice story mode is probably one of the best DC stories in any medium, period. Like very well told, very well done. And the comics come before the game. Well, so the game came out and then the comics came after as a accompaniment to that. Mm. So the, it was... It's the game that started it. Yeah, because the comics are great. Yeah, I mean, one of my one of my favorite games, and one of my favorite, both of them have been, um, you know, Injustice um, one and two have have spawned some of my favorite comics ever too. So yeah, yeah, no, that was yeah, MK MK and Jedi Fallen Order are they the old the yeah. only two games that I really played this year that were new best ones perfect yeah. um side note for me honorable mention to uh pokemon sword and shield i'm a big pokemon guy from growing up and i played the crap out of that and you know people people decided to shit on it for for whatever it was it wasn't necessarily the revolution of a pokemon game that people wanted it to be but mm-hmm. um you know it's 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 training pokemon and fighting them so it's it was pretty much what i expected <laughs> fair enough <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, okay, worst video game. So did you play anything this year that was just bad? Uh, I demoed Anthem. Oh, I heard that was bad. Uh, I didn't like it. Yeah. I don't really have anything else to say about it. No, I mean, that's it's cheap Iron Man ripoff. Yeah. yeah. So I demoed it, didn't like it. Iron Man in the it. Amazon. What's Not that? working. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No. Okay. Um, do you, so uh, that was a quick category. Um, did you read any comics this year? Uh, I read the Vader comics. Now, I don't know when they came out. No, but you read them this but year. But I read them this year. And I think we can both agree, pretty fantastic comics. Yeah, I like the direction it went. I like the lore. I like the bleeding of the crystals. The kyber crystals and stuff, yeah. Um, I kind of like the... I really liked when he went to... I don't even know what it was called. Because uh, it's, it's not the same as what happened in Rebels, but when he goes to that other plane... Yeah. And... Yeah, in the he's, when he's building the castle with Momin. Yeah, yeah, and he's just the design of him, like where his limbs—they're all pure white. The, yeah, the ones that are gone, and the rest of him is like that red, black, carnagey looking yeah. thing. Well, and I think it was an interesting arc to show. So obviously, when we first saw Vader, we we learned of him in the original trilogy, right? And yeah. just a menacing, fearful, whatever, right? And uh, and to see in the comics, like essentially the whole time, he was just trying to get his wife back. That's <laughs> yeah. really all he did. Like, and you know, so he, uh, um, built this castle on Mustafar, um, on top of a bunch of Sith relics just to, to try and, and access this ancient knowledge of, of, um, you know, finding a way to bring back life. Right. I so. got like that. It, like, I agree. Like he, that's all he wanted, but I also, it was so weird because he wanted to just have nothing to do with anything that reminded him of his past at the same time. I know. And weird, like cut huge kick in the nuts that he does all this stuff for the emperor. And the emperor's like, yay, I'll give you this planet. <laughs> it's Mustafar. <laughs> yeah. This is where you well, lost all he, your, that's limbs. what he wanted though. I know, but it's just, I mean, but like, yeah, like they give him that, that plane or the plane, the Pad, Padme's plane or whatever. Yeah. And he just destroys it because he's yeah. like, I don't want to. Well, and I think at this so. Thing. One of the this kind of tangential to whatever we're talking about, but this loops me back to one of my biggest disappointments to do with the rise of Skywalker is the fact that we never saw Darth Vader's castle. Oh, when he was on Mustafar. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he has this whole journey to find this holocron that they refuse to call a holocron. That whole thing would so have been a better movie than what they had. don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. But <laughs> how cool would it have been to see him go to his grandfather's castle mm-hmm. and, and find the relic there? Like, why why were we not able to, to know 
Like they, it's almost like they went out of their way to hide the fact that that was Mustafar to begin with. Well, the only people, the only, I didn't know it was when I first saw it because I completely forgot. But like, I think it's in the comics that I was reading. Well, and I'm one of after. the nerds that read the visual dictionary. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, apparently, there's a point in time when Vader does something to the planet and it does start growing vegetation yeah, again. So that's actually in a story on a. Um, it's called Vader Immortal, mm. and it's a uh, VR video game. Oh. And so, yeah, that, so no one knows it. Yeah. Is it Vader Immortal? Anyway, yeah. So, anyway, not really the point. Um, we were talking about worst video games. And I played, like, three video games all year, so I don't think I really have a worst. Um, we're on comics now. We were on comics. Jeez, man. Holy shit. Get your shit, shit together. Um, yeah, so comics. Um, one of my favorite ones that came out this year was a tie-in to the Dark Knight's Metal series in DC, The Batman mm. Who Laughs. So, hmm. did you hear about what this whole Dark Knight's Metal thing was? I that started? did yeah. see something on. So essentially, it's just a bunch of alternate universe versions of Batman who ended up going crazy and stealing someone else's powers. So there's one called the Red Death, where uh, Bruce Wayne goes crazy and steals the Speed Force from Barry Allen. Oh, I saw a poster for this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the Batman who laughs is um, a Batman who gets injected with fear toxin and becomes the Joker. Yeah, essentially. So um, a a bit of an origin story for him and everything. And I won't spoil anything here, but really, really well written and interesting. Um, But it kind of fell flat at the end. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Um, Another good comic that came out this year. um, There was one called Harleen. So it's like a like a kind of a gritty imagining of her Lee Quinn's origin story, starting with her being a, a psychiatrist and stuff like that. And her a kind gritty of gritty version of that. Is there a non gritty version of that? Well, yeah. Suicide <laughs> squad. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess we don't need to talk about that, yeah. but yeah. So, um, really interesting to see, obviously the slow descent into, uh, madness without even realizing and stuff like that. So that one I'd recommend. And, uh, there's a star Wars comic, uh, called Dr. Afra. Have you heard of that? So Dr. Aphra is basically space female Indiana Jones. And she's got an evil C-3PO that's meant just to kill things. Okay. And is this is, like a Legends character or something? No, this oh. is this is canon. She has many oh. run-ins with Darth Vader. It's actually quite interesting. So Dr. Aphra comic, probably one of my favorites of the year. Oh, interesting. Yeah. For those that don't know, Legends is just one of the many different versions of star wars characters yeah it's basically all the expanded universe stuff before disney bought it and decided to wipe it all out and tell their own stories figure it didn't matter anymore (laughs) and and start telling people they have no content to make movies from yeah and then when we go to worst comics of the year um i'm guessing i'm probably one of the only ones that of of the two of us that read any comics from this year but there was one i was really excited about it's called it was called heroes in crisis so what it was, it was basically a story about um, a special place, uh, a sanctuary that they set up for superheroes that are having mental issues to go. Yeah. And uh, basically someone goes ballistic and kills all of them. Oh. And it's basically them interviewing people and backtracking, trying to figure out what happened. Um, so that one I was super pumped for. And um, again, I won't get too much into the whole story here because I think it, people might want to read it. Yeah. But it was... Um, disappointing to say the least yeah, i gotta get back in because i'm i'm a stickler for like i like what i like and i'll go back and reread those comics over and over infinity crisis the infinity the every, anything with that the yeah. x-men comics the death of superman comics i'll yeah. go back and read all those over and over again and i don't really bite into the new ones i mean the only reason i really bit into the vader ones is because you crushed my dreams when i said i'd love to see a movie where vader's <laughs> just doing vader things to be fair that those vader comics are fantastic yes they are. i think charles soul is the writer on most of them and and man like they just did a really really good job of that yeah like i just because I, I i would like nothing more for a star wars film just just watch 90 minutes of vader just killing people yeah i would love i would love to see um you know a, a star wars story film about vader hunting down the remaining Jedi. or even training the inquisitors or something or you know what that'd be a fantastic disney plus show mm-hmm. too i mean we got to do this while I'd, James Earl Jones is still alive. I'd like to see I'd like to see a Disney Plus show of X-Wing fighters. Yeah. Just like a Top Gun Star yeah, Wars Rogue movie. Squadron, Red yeah. Leader, something yeah. like that. I think yeah. that would be really cool. I would I would almost think it would be funner. Well, no, they made a comic of this. So there's a comic called Alpha Squadron and it's basically that except a unit of tie fighters. Oh. And it's interesting to see cuz some of them 
are conflicted about being part of the first order and stuff like that. We found out all about that in this, <laughs> one, this last movie. Okay. Uh, um, ready to move on from comic books? Sure. Okay. We are, where are we at? We're at almost an hour already, Kyle. Can okay. you believe this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, okay. Best TV show of the year. We've talked about a few. Um, what What are you thinking? Uh, toss up between, I got three that I can't really tell. Uh, the Boys was up there. Stranger so Things season three was really good. Yeah. Um, I would be, that would be probably on the lower of the three and the yeah. Mandalorian. Okay. Well, and, and two of the three of those I haven't seen. Yeah. So, but the boys, fantastic. I mean, one of those things that takes the superhero genre and completely flips it. Yeah. Right. And so for people who don't know, the boys is originally an image comic, I think. It was originally a, a it was a DC imprint of a of a separate comic company, but then when they figured out how off the rails it was, they canceled the DC part of it and, and had to do it independently. But um, the boys is a comic book about superheroes in in the real world, and they're just the worst people ever. Yeah. I can't remember the names of everybody, but the guy that turns invisible is one of my favorite characters. Translucent, yeah, he yeah, just makes me laugh. The yeah, whole time. he was funny. Um, Homelander. Was Home is your, your Superman paragon, basically, yeah. and, and very interesting. And Carl Urban is good in any... I wish they didn't waste him on Scourge, because... Carl Urban is good, but can we talk about... His accent in The Boys isn't fantastic. No. Like, he's an Australian man, I believe, in, in real life. Yes. But his English accent for The Boys, not I fantastic. think he should have just done what Chris Hemsworth does and just talk normally. Yeah, because I mean, very, very few people are really going to be able to tell the difference between Australian and an English accent. True. It's funny how when you hear Chris Hemsworth talk with his Australian accent, because we're used to his Asgard yeah. speak, right? When <laughs> yeah. he when he's talking as an Australian, he just sounds dumb. <laughs> like he can say anything, and he just sounds so bloody <laughs> stupid. Okay, so for you, um, out of the three, what, what do you think? Is it Mandalorian? No, I'd have to go with the boys. Yeah, the boys. Okay. Yeah, I was I I have the boys on my list. I have a little bit of it's it's kind of genre adjacent. But have you ever watched The Good Place? I feel like I have. oh uh, parts of I've seen episodes. Of yeah, it. Ted so and yeah, Bell Ted stuff. dancing, yeah. Kristen Bell. Um, it, just a fantastic show, and it actually just ended up wrapping up uh, a couple days ago, and uh, um, it's it's so good. Oh, really? So good. Huh. One of my favorite shows I think I've ever seen, and and one that they didn't let it out stay there. Welcome, they did four seasons, and that's it. So the first three seasons are on Netflix. Check it out; you got to see it. Nice, yeah, really good. Um, I also, you know what? I keep hearing that Legends of Tomorrow is just a riot. I hear that too, and I haven't watched. I know, it. but they like, just—I can't remember what season, but I just kind of just—I think there was just too many of them. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, this one's got to go because yeah. I got to go outside. Well, and I kind of narrowed it down to everything. Like, I, I cut out everything except The Flash. The Flash, for some reason, was the, the one that stuck here. with me because The Flash is kind of one of my favorite characters ever. And uh, and I think they do a pretty good job of that show, but sometimes I just, like, I am almost hate watching it. I actually, well, I actually stuck with Supergirl. Yeah, and you know what? That's surprising coming from you. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, it, I have issues with Supergirl. But What I, are your thoughts on uh, Suit With Pants? I like she it. Now has a suit with pants. I like it. Yeah. No. I mean, I, would, I don't, I don't care about that stuff. Like it's no, it's just, and you know what? She does a good job with that character. I think. Yeah, like she does good. Like there's certain politics in it, not the show itself. Just inserting politics into <laughs> movies is just like don't do it. In shows like okay, fair enough. Like I get it. Refugees are important and stuff, and I don't know. Just stop it. Just make them go off the comic books and just make TV shows. Fair enough. Um, do you have a worse TV show? Uh, no, because if it was really bad, I wouldn't watch the damn thing. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, out of the st- shows that I do watch, um, I got suckered into watching uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy. Ooh, fun. Um, spo- well, actually, I like Grey's does Anatomy. It, does it get yeah. in the feels? Not really. It no? doesn't make me feel anything, but I mean... It, 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 do you ever feel anything? Sometimes. It's got to be involving a dog. I would think. Yeah, it's going to really hit you feeling. <laughs> I am legend is your crier. Yeah. <laughs> when he has to kill the dog. Actually more of a, more of an old yeller guy. Yeah. Um, For me, if I'm going to, if I'm going to need a good cry, it's Armageddon or nothing. Yeah. Worst TV show out of the ones that I watch would probably have to be, uh, I don't know, probably Supergirl out, yeah. of, the, out of the bunch. Uh, one show that really lost me, um, 
Agents of Shield. I used to love watching oh, Agents Jesus. of Shield. That this still last, exists. This last season, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're in space. There's time travel. What the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like, do you want me to try and explain that? <laughs> you know what? Not now. <laughs> Before this next season comes out, maybe we'll do a bit of a recap and we'll try and get back into it. Yeah. Um, because I think there are some good things in there. I, I really do. Um, but I just, I have not been able to stick with that. I feel like the, that show just got lost in itself. Like it's in humans and Cree and now they've got, you know, they're trying to keep up with the MCU. Yeah. Um, I think nothing happened with the snap of the show. I think they just picked up after the, they brought everyone back. Fair enough. Or um, is it all set before? Or is it all set after? Well, now they're back in like 1940s. And I, New York that 100% or something. makes sense. Yeah. So, in no way. Like the last season was just not good. I Fair just didn't enough. like it. Yeah. So I, wa- I did watch that. So that was hands down the worst thing I've seen okay. this Fair year. Um, all right. Actually, so, no, I'm full of shit. I'm full of shit. <laughs> Game of Thrones was the worst thing there I've seen all is. year. I was wondering when that was coming. <laughs> Which went on a. 10 minute rant 45 minutes ago. Yeah. It's your most disappointing thing of your year, but it's not the worst TV show. So, um, okay. So, um, I want to do best and worst movies, but I want to start on the negative because I want to kind of finish off a little bit more on the positive because I have a ton of movies that came out this year that were really good. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, as far as worst movies. So, um, I had a couple that kind of tagged into me. So, um, if anybody knows the way my mind works, it's not going to surprise anybody that I was a huge Lego movie fan <laughs> because that thing doesn't focus on anything for I, more than 20 seconds. I wanted to absolutely punch you and Dan in the face after the first Lego movie. Yeah, but it was fantastic. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a good movie. All, but, all that ever came, all I ever heard of was downstairs was everything is awesome. <laughs> Every but, five minutes. Um, Lego movie two, huge disappointment. I actually, I got about half an hour into it and I couldn't keep watching it. So that is definitely on my honorable mentions for worst movie of this year. I haven't even given it any thought. Yeah, it doesn't strike me as no. your type, but that was one thing I wanted to mention. Um, what about you? You got anything? Worst movie? Yeah. Um, we've seen some trash movies. I wanted to put The Predator on here. You know, knowing that it didn't come out last year, it was the year before, I believe. I, I believe. Oh, yeah. That was 2017. But my that. God, that movie was bad. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. <laughs> but that's just because I used to run around my uncle's farm pretending I was a predator, for God's sake. So. Yeah, fair enough. Um, no, I, Does that mean that like you're the big ultra predator that shows up and I'm the little one that's like trying to help the humans in that movie uh, <laughs> that gets his maybe, ass kicked? Maybe, maybe. Or maybe you're just a human in general. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that, uh, but I agree that movie was pretty bad. But yeah. I still, I, I will still if watch it if it's fair on, enough. Right? Fair enough. Um, I honestly, the only movie that really comes to mind that I did not like, um, and there was things they could have just simply done that I would have liked it a lot more. Yeah, was Dark Phoenix. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, and um, I think. I mean, honorable mentions aside, we got to say that is the worst movie of this year. I think so. I mean, it was from the stories of the overblown budget and, you know, there was a story of completely reshooting the whole third act because it was too much like Captain Marvel. And then you get this bland, nonsensical fight on a train, in a train yard at the end. With things that are bulletproof, but sometimes bullets can kill them. Yeah, and like you have Jennifer Lawrence begging to be killed off in this movie and well, like you didn't even have to order the movie to know that happened. wants the sweet merciful release of her character's death but like so but then you got fassbender and mcavoy who are two of the best actors we have and they i think they absolutely killed both the roles yeah they did but i mean it, it, fassbender's in this movie for a grand total of of what 10 minutes and all he really gets to do is look constipated while he's trying to hold a helicopter off the ground yeah he's fighting with Jean Grey. And yeah. Then, yeah. I mean, and there's just, just, there's just a lot of things that happen in it that like, like that I can accept them. I mean, he's battling with Jean Grey, whatever. I mean, they just, if they're going to do a Phoenix story, they literally have to do three, a trilogy. Well, it's of, a Phoenix saga in yeah, the comics. It's not one movie. And, and how much pouty bitching Cyclops and Jean Grey do we need? Like these are not, the, these characters are not the people that they have represented in the movies. Like, uh, see, is, I didn't, I didn't mind the Ty Sheridan Cyclops. 
I just... Yeah, but we've had no time with him. Uh, yeah, um, but that's because th- this series should have started off with them. It shouldn't have been this decade, decade jumps with switching the brothers around for some reason. Yeah. The Summers brothers around and then killing one of them and then trying to get some sort of connection. Like you should have just had Cyclops from the beginning. Well, and, and for as good as the Marvel movies have done of connecting everything and establishing a timeline, this X-Men timeline is messed up beyond repair in so many ways. Well, in the dark, wasn't this dark Phoenix, wasn't this written by the same guy that wrote, wrote the last stand? Yeah. So well, I'm not sure he was involved. Like, so it's, I don't know. I feel like the X-Men movie became a just, uh, how are we going to get Wolverine in this movie? Yeah. And I mean, I understand Hugh Jackman did a great job and stuff and they've obviously struggled to move on from that. But man, am I ever glad that this is out of Fox's hands now and mm-hmm. into Disney and Marvel's hands. Cause this, I mean, there have been some, some great movies doing it. First class. I really liked it. Days of future past. I really liked it. liked it, but apocalypse and dark Phoenix have just been, the biggest whimper of an ending that I've seen to, to this. You How know, many was there? Was there f- only four? I feel like there was five. Four of the new cast ones, I think. First, cla- first class. First class, Days of Future Past, of Future Past, which was kind of a hybrid of both. Um, Apocalypse and, and Dark Phoenix. Was there four? Yeah, yeah. I feel like there was You're four. probably thinking of New Mutants, which apparently no, is I'm coming not. out next year. Yeah. That, Again, I, forward that, sizzle I, for next episode. I, yeah. I, I'm actually looking forward to that movie. Yeah. Well, so, if we ever see it. Yeah. We'll see. Um, okay. So worst movie of the year, Dark Phoenix. Mm. Perfect. I would have been good with simple thing. Like it wouldn't have been the worst movie of the year if they wouldn't have. Cause they're all supposed to be related. All of a sudden the Xavier school is called Gene Gary school. Well, I think the they're kind of calling back into the, the comics with that too, where, um, right. nope, lost my train of thought. But it's just like nothing makes sense in this in the in that whole universe. No, no not at all. Like, and and it's not even like they care to make it make sense because because Jean Grey is in the stars in the nineties, but yet at the end of Days of Future Past, she's old. Yeah, and I think there's one thing that we can all thank Fox for, and it's Deadpool because that actually worked out. Yeah. And I am excited to see Deadpool somehow. Well, and I, I enjoyed X. Well, I enjoyed the first X Men and X Two. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think you know they kind of kicked off this whole thing, right? Yeah. So we do have them to thank for a lot of things. Yeah. But it, it, I don't know. I mean, I I think Marvel, like I think the X Men movies, I think the Spider Man movies, and I think all of the DC movies as a whole are kind of victims of always being compared to how good Marvel's done. Well, I think the one thing, like this is probably something that you're going to be sad to hear. The one thing that I'm glad that the mutants are available now is now that they can actually have a lot of these female characters. They've been really hamstrung with female characters that they can use. They have. It's true. Because all the powerful female characters in the comics are usually the mutants. Well, yeah. I mean, you have, you know, Rogue Storm, and Storm. Rogue and and Jean Grey. Yeah, yeah. And famously Storm in the comics married to Black Panther for a little while. Yeah. You know, uh, Rachel Summers. Yeah. Like a lot of cool storylines. Um, with the X-Men and Avengers and stuff crossing over that people don't even realize. And the thing I'm probably most excited for, but we'll talk about um, in a future episode, Fantastic Four. Yeah, see, I'm actually like, super excited. I hope the rumors, I don't know if the rumors or if that is uh, Black Panther 2 with with Namor. Yeah, and I think that would be really good too. So, I mean, would, would Keanu Reeves be a perfect Namor? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess... Because he could just be a dick. Uh, the thing is, is because I like, really like Jason Momoa's Aquaman, so I'm having a hard time getting yeah, away from that view. But even in the comics, Aquaman and Namor were two very different things. Yeah, I know, but it makes sense that it would be a South Pacificer. Yeah, okay. You know what I Fair mean? Enough. It wouldn't be a, a, just a white dude. Yeah. In the, you know what I mean? Good call. Good call. So, um, okay. Hell, um, even The Rock would be a good Namor. Yeah, I'm just... Black Adam, man. I am excited for that. Anyway, uh, yeah. I digress. Um, okay, best movies of the year. Um, I've got uh, like quite a few honorable mentions because there was a lot of really good movies that I even forgot came out this year. Mm. So I'm going to rifle through a couple and you can tell me what your thoughts are. Um, one of my favorite movies this year that I completely forgot about, John Wick 3. Yeah, that was on my list. Dude just kicks a bunch of ass. Yeah. You know, Halle Berry with the the sick t- or the, the trained uh, dogs. Yeah. You know, like... Big, big conspiracy theory that John Wick 4 and Matrix 4 are coming out on the same day and they're going to be the same damn movie. Oh. Conspiracy plot theory. twist. Yeah. I, I will tell... I'm 
I am a huge, huge Matrix guy, and I cannot wait until we talk about the the Matrix on this podcast in the future. But yeah, um, John Wick three, really, really good movie. Um, I I thought at some point after watching the first two, I was like, all this is is this guy kicking ass, and I will eventually get tired of this. Turns out I didn't. No. Nope. Turns out that never happened. Nope. So um, good for that. Uh, another one that oh, came out. Oh, this I love my favorite line: "All this for a dog." <laughs> it's more than a dog. <laughs> Um, Spider-Man Far From Home. We totally forgot about this movie. It's based on that one, yeah. Yeah. And you know I what? Know I, I've got to say, I, I probably my favorite Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. Really? Like it more than Spider-Man 2? Yeah. I, I And I I loved Mysterio in this movie. and But I liked him more in the first half when he was acting good. Yeah. Like I partway through this movie, I knew the turn was coming, but I was like, man, I kind of hope this guy's just good. I really enjoyed how so I this is like a it's a, like a double-sided coin for me. I really enjoy how they created the illusions and all that stuff, but it was also so convoluted to get to that. But that's that Mysterio. I was, like, mm. I was watching this, I don't know, I think it was Cinema Sins or something and it was like cuz they were making fun of like remember in Ant-Man and the Wasp? How they're they're all wearing baseball caps and sunglasses, and Paul Rudd is like, yeah. who's not going to recognize wearing sunglasses?" Well, then literally, there's a scene where Peter Parker's standing there, and just like this, you see Jake Gyllenhaal standing there with sunglasses and a baseball. I cap. saw that too. Like, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. So I liked I like how they do tie-ins like like that. That's the yeah. tie-in that you wouldn't really think about. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know why I spaced on it. Yeah. And I, I liked some of the different Spider-Man suits. Like, the stealth suit looked pretty cool. Um, but I really liked the one at the end, the black and red suit. The black and red. The stealth suit uh, felt like it was, I don't know, it looked like he was wearing, like, a black toque. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. He was wearing just, a ski mask. And it just, like, popped. Night monkey. It, like, safety goggles. <laughs> like, it was just, I don't know. It was. Zack Snyder must have been there because the goggles were flipping up. That's <laughs> that's his thing. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so Spider-Man Far From Home, great movie that didn't quite make the cut. Um, Toy Story 4, that was also this year. I haven't seen it. No. no. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's. I, I'm preparing for it. I just watched all three on Disney+. Plus. So. That might get you in the feels. Too. Yeah. Um, what else was it this year? A couple of, a couple of good horror movies. It Chapter 2 was Liked this it. year. And Us. Us was really good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Us was Famous, really good. Famous uh, follow-up from Get Out. Not related though. No, but yeah. like it, that was his his sophomore movie. He makes some really good movie. I actually I actually just watched Get Out again the other day. Yeah, and, and I mean, even though you know everything that's going on, it's by all cool accounts, Us isn't quite on the level of Get Out. Um, would you? Would that be correct? Uh, I feel like Us is really good if you're not paying super close attention to what's going on. Fair enough, because you immediately know you can spoilers you can immediately tell that there's something off about her from the beginning. Yeah. Um, okay. But, and, and so if you've gone into this kind of having an idea that what it's about, yeah. and then you can notice that something's off about yeah. her right away, you kind of, it doesn't take away from the movie, but you're kind of, you're not as surprised by some of the twists. But that's one of the best things in movies when, you know, a twist happens and then you can go back and watch it a second time and see all the clues to it and see, you know, what you missed the first time. Yeah. And, and I love that personally. Yeah. No, like, it, yeah, it is. It is a good factor. I was just saying, like, that's the only kind of downside yeah. to it is like, because I'm one of those, because now with the, the age of Easter eggs and yeah. reviews and yeah. nothing really can, like if a movie can get out without a leak, com leak coming out about what's going on, it's oh, a miracle. Man. Like the fact that Baby Yoda got to the screen without anybody knowing it was coming. Well, and I mean, so... um Again, forward, flash forward for for the big thing. I think we're both waiting to talk about would be Avengers Endgame. But oh no, I hated that movie. <laughs> but uh, um, not a lot got out about that either. No, I. But I think I think a lot of us just kind of knew what was going to happen. Though. Yeah, like it right. was like it was. Uh, we knew. We didn't know exactly how it was going to happen, but I think everyone knew we were going to see Cat yeah. pick up Mjolnir. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. And all we'll that jazz. But. So um, one of the other ones that I just wanted to bring up real quick before I, I let you go. Um, actually, I have two more, but I'll just do one until you go. One of the one of the most underappreciated movies, I think, of this year was Shazam. I thought that oh, was yeah, a really good movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, I thought, I thought there was a lot of good humor to it. I thought, um, you know, seeing the Shazam family was something that was really cool. Um, the villains were a little, little rushed, but it was yeah, good. I, I, but I thought it was a good movie. 
I liked the villains. Uh, I I liked. Uh, I didn't mind the idea. What of was the his seven name? Deadly Chicago? Sins, but you, Savannah. Savannah. Yeah, I didn't mind the idea of the deadly sins and stuff, right? But but they there was no distinguishment in them. They were just gray monsters. Uh yeah. You no, know, there wasn't enough. Like there to... wasn't like I mean you could tell which one was the glutton one because it was a giant fat one with a stomach. Yeah, a mouth in its in its stomach, but like. Um, yeah, I mean, there wasn't really, like, you couldn't really tell, like, Wrath and Greed, which one was which, and yeah. all that stuff. Well, and I'm a fan of, I mean, kind of like the Thor Ragnarok style of doing things, but having one of these characters that brings a little bit more comedic uh, energy to it and a little bit more of a light movie to, to these kind of things, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of, I think it's neat to have that. Like, you can have your serious Captain America movies and, and stuff like that, but then you can have your fun mm-hmm. Maybe the world, the oh, the whole world isn't ending, but you can you know enjoy some stuff a little bit more, or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. So I thought that one was good. Uh, what do you, what do you have for for some of your favorite? Uh, movies? Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Right, that was one I completely missed. Yeah, I just uh, they're they could be the worst movies ever, and I yeah. still enjoy, I just like watching monsters destroy stuff on big screen. Well, and I really liked that first. Or like the first new Godzilla movie with Brian Cranston and all yeah. that. Um, I didn't think there was enough Godzilla in it, so it no, sounds like it this wasn't. probably corrects a little bit of that. It does there's quite a bit more? I but mean, just... how cool was it in the first one when Godzilla grabs that monster, pries its <laughs> mouth open, and radiation breaths down its throat until its body falls off? I, like that's one thing. Like I mean, uh, Godzilla in all the movies has always had personality because a it was a dude in a suit. Yeah. So it, his mannerisms, you could see that there's. But to transfer that into this giant monster and see that it's a nice dude, yeah. you know what I mean? Like he's a nice guy, uh, just kind of doing as someone wakes him up and he's trying to sort things out and humans created a mess. He's trying to clean it up. And I like that. You know. So what does this give you optimism for Godzilla versus King Kong? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the same as any versus movie. They're going to fight each other and then they're going to have to join up to fight. Mecha Godzilla? No, I think if it's no, going to be a Mecha Godzilla. I think, I think if it's going to be a Mecha, it's going to be a Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, maybe. I because, mean, they kind of tease that because you haven't, bit at the you end haven't of it. seen it. But, oh, I've heard of it. Kyle, but yeah, like the, the, the head came off, and yeah, then and somebody took it, and, and then Tyrion Lannister came and picked it up. Oh, and, wonderful! And so I think that might be it. Okay. Um, or it could be. I don't know. I think I like I said, it could be the worst movie ever. I'm still yeah. going to enjoy it. I'm going to okay. enjoy watching King Kong fight, punch Godzilla in the Fair mouth, enough. and then Godzilla till whack him yeah. into a mountain. Speaking of dumb movies that we enjoyed, Hobbs and Shaw. Hundred percent. Yeah, that yeah. one just kind of came to me. Entertaining, but we don't need to get into that one. But entertaining and popcorn, kind movie. of hilarious popcorn yeah, movie. Something for sure. that you okay. go to and have a good time. Anything else? Um, I actually didn't mind Dark Fate Terminator. Ah, that one I missed too. Uh, you know what? I was really scorned. I was scorned first by Terminator Salvation. I was mm. so See, pumped. I didn't mind that movie either. It's it's okay, but man, I was looking forward to that movie so much. Um, like I love Terminator two, Terminator three wasn't great. Christian Bale at the time was kind of at the top of his game. Um, and just not great, but Genesis wasn't that bad. Genesis, Genesis would have been 300 times better if they didn't ruin it in the trailers. Yeah, that's fair. If we didn't know John John Connor Connor was was a Terminator, was a Terminator the whole time. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't the greatest movie. I just kind of liked, it kind of had that Terminator two feel to it. Um, it did. It was it was just, uh, although they went, I mean, it's, it's not like, it's not like I wouldn't, it's not the movie of the year. It's just a movie yeah. I like this year. Yeah. And that's the um, uh, same with a lot of the ones I mentioned. They made a lot of changes to it that are just weird now, like different yeah. timelines and different. Like, but that's the, and they keep doing that. They keep doing the timeline manipulation. Thing, time travel right? movies are always going to be weird. And yeah. you're, you're, if you go more than, I guess, well, obviously two movies, you're going to have a hard time keeping it. Even, even back to the future three was a kind of a mess. Don't don't speak ill about the future. <laughs> I won't. Um, and then the other notable mention, Jumanji. I love those movies. Oh man, that was good. The next level was awesome. Yeah, so, it actually was. <laughs> You're getting too far away from your microphone, though. The the rock. <laughs> the you rock. Don't need to deep throat it. We're good. The, the the rock playing Danny DeVito was awesome. Yeah, it was. Um, Danny Glover being played by Kevin Hart was great. That was funny. Um. Uh, what's her Aquafina playing? Yeah, that was uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, she was playing a male, yeah. a male role. It was great. Well, I just, I just love, I just loved the aspect, like the body switching. And yeah, the, it was fun, and how they act, and the you know the Rock is the Rock's great. The Rock oh. is this 
thing made out of granite and yeah. he's being played by you know a skinny dorky yeah. dude or an old short stubby and, man and, 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 you know i think an underappreciated aspect of the rock is just his comedic timing. ability and comedic timing <laughs> yeah um yeah, I had nothing but good things to say. I, you'll watch anything with Godzilla. I'll watch anything with The Rock. Oh, I'll the, watch the human version the of Godzilla. I'll, I'll, I'll watch The Rock versus Godzilla. Ooh, <laughs> I think we just made a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, let's let's write that one up. Anything else? Uh, no, nothing really. Nothing. Just the oddball move. I'm just kind of quickly having a glance. Oh, I guess we should t- maybe talk a little bit about Star Wars because I didn't hate it. Right. I guess for me that it, it feels like a, a 2020 movie, even though it isn't. Um, the more time I've had to reflect and um, decompress after seeing The Rise of Skywalker, the more disappointed I am. And I think part of that is spurned on by hearing what Colin Trevorrow's plans were. I haven't heard for, those. Okay. We'll go through that. <laughs> but I think maybe we should dedicate... I, I would actually really like to dedicate a whole separate episode to Star, Star Wars. Wars? Okay. Um, Cause I think there's a lot to talk about with the rise of Skywalker and, and all the things that led to, to the way it is and, and the Colin Trevorrow stuff. So I would, uh, I'd like to talk about that a little bit separately, but I guess if, if I were to boil down my, um, my feelings on it is it, I'm, I'm disappointed. So it would, would it be on your worst or your, would it be on your okay list? I think it's on the middle list. It's, it's on the, just a movie list gotcha. so there were there were things about that movie that i loved and uh i would love you know to have the time to talk about those things but uh you know i think for me total rose-colored glasses but seeing the way avengers endgame wrapped everything up showed how good you can do it Mm. and the way star wars did just showed a way that you can try and be that and fail yeah yeah no, that's fair. Neither of us mentioned the Joker again. I mean, the Joker was a favorite. Yeah, movie good too. movie. Good movie. But I guess movies that we've mentioned already is in our best. Is obviously they're <laughs> in our best movies of the year. No, for sure. Um, but I think, um, I mean, can we can are, are we ready to say that the best movie of the year was Avengers Endgame? Yeah, yeah. And that when I say that now, I don't think it was individually one of the best movies of the year. Probably not. I think just the. Oh, what it was the culmination of of everything it, that it it turned out to be i agree with that but i also have to say there were moments in this movie that got me just downright giddy but that's what i mean like it was a fan service movie it yeah. wasn't it wasn't necessarily but a it, good movie it did movie. fan service right yeah i think and, and and rise of skywalker is a perfect example of the way you do fan service wrong yeah yeah like fan service for the sake of it is nothing but in, in fan service in the in the way of paying off things that have happened over the last 10 years in a meaningful way hmm. how long have we waited to hear chris evans say avengers assemble yeah like that that to me that or moment, lift your near yeah um, like the to to have you know, to see the hammer fly back into his hand and to pan to Thor's face and him just say, I knew it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, right. Like I actually l- laughed like a girl in the theater when that happened. So I, like I said, I loved all that part. I loved the Thor's transition yeah. into the Fat Viking Thor. King, basically Lebowski. like King Thor. Lebowski yeah. Thor. Yeah. Um, one thing I will never, ever forgive these movies for is what they did to the Hulk. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, but think, you know what? I Well, I understand what you mean, but I think the smart Hulk in this has actually done really, really well. But he didn't do anything. Uh, I love... I just He held the building up. Yeah, but some of his... his I guess some of his comedic um, stuff in the development of it, like when they when they go through trying to send Ant-Man back in time and he they finally get him back and they look yeah. at him and he goes, Time, time travel. travel! Yeah. No, like, yeah, like I get that. But I mean, that's... That to me is like that's Mark Ruffalo adding to the character. Hundred percent. They didn't. This is a dude that Thanos tr- does his very very best yeah. to avoid confronting. But you you forget too. This is the guy that got the snap to bring everyone back. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. So he's pow- he's, he's as powerful as Thanos, technically. Not quite because it obviously would have took him out. But you're talking about a guy that got boot stomped in the first movie yeah. never saw him again and then now he's smart can train can fight can do all this stuff and he still somehow gets taken out so that he never has to fight Thanos. Well, but i think in the comic and and in this i think what kind of, what they're alluding at is when when um 
they're talking about how he's now smart Hulk and he has best of both worlds. I think he's compromised on a little bit of both. I don't think he's necessarily as smart as as Bruce Banner ever was, but I don't think he was ever as strong as just the Hulk ever was. I was I just think it I think it would be perfect to see uh a Black Panther a th- three square off against Black Panther, uh Thor and the Hulk go up against Kull and Thanos. Yeah, okay. I can see that. Cuz that way you still have an underpowered Hulk cuz there's only two of them they're fighting. Yeah. But instead of just have, he was just, he was, he was there. He was in the field. He was fighting things, but you never saw him do anything. No, but I mean, I think, um, I guess I think if you look at it in the final battle, yeah, a little bit disappointing for the Hulk. But if you look at it as, as the movie as a whole, I think he was a key part in that. As a whole arc for him. It's kind of cool. Like, and it was going to work well for something that I am 100% looking forward to is the She-Hulk series. Yes. So I'm I'm assuming this has got a lot to do with how that's going to play. But I think uh, the big thing for me, I just think obviously like kind of like what we talked about before, I think Avengers Endgame had some of the best moment moments I've seen in movies. And I think Mm. that part of that was how long it took them to pay off and how, how they did it, you know? And and it all started with on your left. It did. Like that was just like, Oh, that moment. Yeah. Like, you know, to, to hear that and the way, you know, he slowly turns around and everybody starts, starts coming through the portals and stuff like that. Um, you know, and yeah, just, and even like the little, the little ways we got to see stuff from the past in a different way, Yeah, you know, like watching the, the end of the battle at, uh, of New York and, Mm. um, you know, the the hail hydra moment in the so elevator good. so, so good. cool and then um, it makes so much sense yeah like I, I hear a lot of people complain like why would they how why wouldn't they be how why wouldn't they be why would they think Captain America's part I was like well do you think you'd be in there if you knew you were a hydra and exactly. you wouldn't be kicking the piss out of you <laughs> well and I like how they tied it into one of the best scenes in any of those movies the elevator fight scene yeah. from the Winter Soldier yeah and you think that's gonna happen again and it totally gets flipped where it shows it shows how much Steve Rogers is how you probably subvert people's yeah. expectations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, um, one of the other moments I wanted to talk about was, uh, Captain America versus Captain America. And yeah, one was, of the best yeah. things, Pucky um, is alive. <laughs> or he's like, I could do this all day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I was rather surprised at how well the young cap was handing the old cap his ass. I know it's interesting, right? I was kind of surprised by that. But, but uh, I think, um, cause that was a still a fairly fresh speak from the time. Like he, he was went into the ice. True. He was only Captain America for a year yeah. or so went to the ice. And then that was basically his first like thing out. Yeah. So, but in regards to training and skill on, to what he was on the other side of things though, you're looking at a Steve Rogers that hasn't done anything for five years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. I so keep he's forgetting not, about the five year time. He's though. not, you know, I think, um, you know, Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War, Steve Rogers and Age of Ultron at top of top game, Steve Rogers, right? Yeah. You know, learning how to use like when that scene in, in the Winter Soldier where he runs around the boat and takes everyone out on that boat. Yeah. You can see that he knows his power now. He, he, yeah. He, he knows what he's doing. And that's what I mean. Cause like, cause the, that was after the Avengers. So yes. like, that's when he finally had time to actually train. Exactly. So that's why I was so surprised how much he was manhandling. Yeah, I think, I think it's just because we've seen like, you know, uh, black widow has her team still in yeah. that five years. Um, but captain America's not on it. He's not really yeah. doing anything. I don't think yeah. he's, he's helping people a different way. Yeah. But he's um, doing he's doing Falcon's job exactly, and you know what I think that that's kind of a tribute to to his friend and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that too. So, um, again, some of the greatest movies, um, a, a satisfying conclusion, um, and and an actual ending for some of the characters and stuff like that. I still think we th- um, I think apparently know, there's rumors that well we can get to that but, after. But if if this were the ending, it would be satisfying. I think if it's not the ending for some of the characters, it would be really unsatisfying. I think I, I think I will it. be incredibly disappointed if he comes back. But if you see, so I think they played that Iron Man death just about spot on perfect. Well, that's why he can't come back. Yeah, like, like he, with, but when he says "I am Iron Man," he snaps his fingers and he's so messed up he can't even talk. Yeah, I think doing that wordlessly was genius. Yeah, like and the I fact just, that that was an improvised line too, like it doesn't. I don't know how it wasn't. I don't know how that slipped people's minds that that was shouldn't be what he says there. 
but apparently it was. Apparently well, they apparently called them back they, in to do it. They had that with the with Thanos saying, "I'm inevitable." He said that originally in the script. Yeah, and you didn't have an answer to it. No, like, no, he said something else, but it wasn't that. It wasn't uh, Iron Man. Yeah, it was I like. Don't know. And I just like don't know because as soon as like he well, yeah, grabbed they said it, they did that as, in reshoots. As, well, as soon as he said I am inevitable and he had it, I knew what he was going to say. Like yeah. everyone knew what he was going to say. I don't know mm-hmm. how that slipped through Russo's minds, uh, or if they're just saying it slipped their minds. Yeah, maybe add a little bit of flair to it. But in the end, I mean, but yeah, if, I mean, if he comes back in anything more than an AI capacity, I'd be. I think it'll kind of ruin it. Fair enough. Well, or I mean, don't forget, we're getting a multiverse here. There could be an alternate version of Tony Stark that we see. Uh, yeah, I just don't want it. I just he started it. He created this huge thing. But I what think about if it's done, like a, what I if think. it's a Crisis on Infinite Earths esque cameo? Use his daughter. Yeah, but what if, what if we see a cameo like Doctor Strange jumps to a different Earth and there's a a weird version of Iron Man who or a weird version or, of or Tony Stark where he's not even Iron Man or something? Really? Yeah, like something something. I could live like with that, that yeah. if he wasn't actually Iron Man or something, but. Yeah, I mean, if they just go to another universe and be like, hey, we need your help, Tony. Well, and I mean, one of the worst things, maybe Taskmaster, Tony Stark. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to play that. From what I've seen on that, I feel like that. I feel like Taskmaster is Clint Barton. But I feel like, I you, you know, I, I've told you this multiple times, it's, it's a Black Widow clone. You think? And I think Black Widow comes back. I feel like she's back. too tall. Like, I just feel like she's big. Or oh, yeah, big. you can't wear shoes like that. That's fine. You can't you can't make yourself look taller. There's no way to do that. Oh, and be able to move like that? Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, I I I hope not. But I I don't care. I mean, if it is, it is. Yeah. I, I mean, mean we'll, it, we'll see. I don't care who it is as long as they make a character out of it. I mean, you're stepping on the toes of my episode two subject of Black Widow. Yeah. So, so okay, I'm we'll, gonna have to ask you to stop. Fine. Um, anything else from Endgame that we um think? I mean, really. So I I think it's. The, the the Marvel Cinematic Universe really um, kind of rejuvenated isn't the right word, but kind of revolutionized. I get that's what I'm looking for. Revolutionized the way movies are made now and the way franchises are thought of, for better or for worse. You no, know, there's like, like I mean, now there's now studios. It seems like they're just trying to think of how to make the next universe, and it's kind of become a detriment to a lot of movies yeah i i don't disagree dceu with that. is an example the monster universe is yeah. another example and they've false started that three times like those like they could have like i didn't mind the dracula movie with yeah, dracula uh, what's his face right. i can't remember his name off the top of my head i thought um, it was great and it was supposed to lead into that whole thing and then they dropped that movie and made the mummy luke evans luke evans um i think there was potential there like i would like to see a good frankenstein movie yeah. or you know um, creature from the Black Lagoon, all that kind Invisible of stuff. Invisible Man coming out next year. It's on the uh, list. Don't worry. Oh yeah, I forgot that's coming out. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, but it's, so it's to a detriment because now people now for sure instead of it occurring just naturally, they just had this thing that just grew into this universe. But how cool is it for people like us who who grew up reading these comics who get to live in in the time where this is a thing? Yeah, I mean, it It was such a thing, and I was so invested in it. Like, it took me a while. It took me until a pretty much the Black Widow trailer yeah. for me to get on board to with get watching back more into it. on yeah. these things, because which isn't a lot because nothing happened in no. between that. But I was just like, I, I've had this conversation with you before. Like, I think I'm done with this. Like, I just, yeah. it's it's too much. I have 10 years. And- well, it was a lot, right? And I think that, like I said before, I think if, if Endgame was the ending of it, I don't think that would be disappointing. Mm-hmm. I think it was good. I'm still still up for seeing other stories um, in this universe and, and kind of excited to see what happens. But at the same time, um, like I get it. It's been a long time. It's been a lot of movies. And, yeah. and um, selfishly, I'm hoping they stay popular so we can keep doing this. Yeah. Like there's, <laughs> like there's definitely certain things. Like, and there's things I'm looking forward to. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how this Sony Marvel relationship works. I'm having yeah. a hard time seeing a Morbius movie without Blade being involved and considering Blade is coming. Yeah. I feel like there's got to be some sort of crossover there. I don't think there's going to be because I think Sony is still trying to keep it at a point where if they want to break it all free, they do. Yeah. I have theories on Morbius. We'll, we'll get to that yeah. too. But I, I have theories. Um, But yeah, I mean, like some of the future stuff is going to be really interesting to see. And, and, uh, but for me, hands down, um, Avengers Endgame, best best movie of 2019, and, and maybe my favorite ever. Yeah. When you consider everything that it, it factors the, so- the Infinity Saga. 
I like because because I, I like the. Infin- oh, you mean all twenty one movies? No, I mean the infin- <laughs> I mean infi- the Infinity War because the, mo- the movie yeah, Infinity, Infinity War, War. I like the and movie Avengers better Endgame. and Avengers Endgame. I together. disagree, but I, I get it. I just think it's a better movie. I just the the way they ended it. I've never ever had that experience in a movie theater before. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. I just and I think it was just written better, and then this one. When you take them as a whole, it's a a fantastic achievement. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Um, Well, Kyle, that, that is 2019. Uh, Yeah. I've had enough of talking to you for now. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, So um, uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for listening. This has been uh, masters of the multiverse with John and Kyle Um, moving forward. uh, This is going to be a a weekly podcast. And uh, if you're uh, looking for any updates on us, we are on Instagram at masters of the multiverse pod. Um, we have an email as well. So if anybody has any questions or, or ideas for topics that we can cover in future shows, our email is masters of the multiverse pod, all one word at gmail.com. And, uh, we would be happy to read those and, and maybe even read some on the air. And, uh, we are looking forward to, uh, to carrying through and, and bringing everybody a, a real man's perspective or not a real man's, <laughs> an everyday man's. <laughs> Watch that one. That's an, there's everyday, your YouTube movement right an there. everyday man's perspective on all things nerd and, and pop culture and, and comic books. So um, anything else to wrap up with, Kyle? Uh, if you like it, share it with your friends. Let people know what's going on. Yeah, like, uh, give us a like. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Um, write us a review would help out too. Um, uh, anything you guys can do, tell a friend. And uh, we look forward to talking with you guys next week. Sounds good. Adios. See you later.